For the first time in history, Miss America pageant refused to give out the measurements of its contestants. But this morning on People Are Talking, we'll give out the measurements of the contestants in our beauty pageant. I think the perfect figure would be about 44, 32, 35. That's right, 44 inches chest, 32 inches waist, 35 inches hips. Because this morning, we have a male beauty pageant. And you'll learn more about that. Men in Beauty is next on People Are Talking. And now, People Are Talking with Richard Bay. Good morning! Thanks for joining me today on People Are Talking. I'm Richard Bay. Later on in the show, we're going to meet the contestants uh, that are taking part in this male beauty pageant. They will be competing in um, tuxedos as well as in swimwear. I wonder if they have to stick the little gum on their, on their butts like the women did in the Miss America pageant to keep those swimsuits from riding up. We'll find out all those interesting questions when we meet those contestants. But first, we're going to talk to the person that runs the beauty pageant for men. She is Veronica Brancato. She's the president of the U.S. Man of the Year pageant. Please welcome her to our show. All right, this is not a joke. You're serious about this, right? Extremely serious, yes. Well, where'd you get the idea to have a beauty pageant for men? Well, everyone has always said since I've been 17 years old and competed myself in many beauty pageants that why don't they do it for men? And I think the time is right now. I think men are ready to come out and they go to the uh, beauty shops to get their hair done now. They're more concerned about their fashions than if they are in style or whether they are just, you know, old fashioned. And, you know, they're not so shy anymore either. Are you looking, I know you look at talent and you look at personality and poise and all those things. They say they look at it in the Miss America pageant, ha, ha, ha. But, you know, a lot of people say that the most important thing is how the women in that pageant look in a swimsuit. Is that important for Phys you? Physical condition, Richard, is extremely important to us because what we are trying to establish here is history. We are trying to establish for the first time a competition for the average all-American men of our country to go out there and become a role model for the younger generation for the first time. There's nothing like it. There has never been anything like it. This and is similar to the Miss America pageant, which is absolutely. what they're trying to do. Little girls have a role model in Miss America. We're going to give them a role model in the U.S. Man of the Year. Well, what are you looking for in, this, in the guy that's going to be the winner of Mr. Man of the Year? What? Well, basically, he's going to have to be in good physical condition and, of course, good moral character. Okay, you know. I mean, Bob Guccione better not have any well, pictures of this I guy. Well, that's right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but we are also looking for something more than that. We are looking for a certain charisma, something that he would project as a special type of a guy that when he walks out onto a stage or out into a crowd, that they would want to emulate him. Where that, are you finding these guys? Where are uh, they coming from? They're coming from all over. We have plumbers. We have um, men that are doctors. We even have school teachers, as you will see today, but they are all types of uh, men. Are all you going to have Mr. New Jersey and yes. uh, Mr. Pennsylvania? We have, starting in October, we have 51 competitions across the United States, including D.C. They are mainly being hosted at the Hyatt Hotels across the country and other fine places like that. There will be about 1,000 people seating capacity in every state, and we will find the one man in every state to represent him in Atlantic City in December. And, and they're all, and it's going to be in Atlantic City? Yes. From all over our area? Absolutely. Let me ask some of the women in the audience. Do you think this is a good idea? Would you like to see a male beauty pageant? What do you think? Yes, I would love to see a male beauty pageant. Really? Why? What would you look for in a guy? Um, I guess the main thing would be the physique. The physique of the guy. You want a real muscle, muscle guy or you want some guy that's slim or what? I think a combination of both. <laughs> I guess you can have mu much more variety. You like a male beauty pageant? I love it. You love it. Yeah, I love to look at men. I can look at my husband all the time, but it's nice. They look at women. So why can't we look at men? They look good. They have They can have the, the, the tush competition where they all come out and they stand like this. Woo! Oh, brother. Okay, well, we're going to take a look at some of these guys that are in the pageant. What, before we do that, though, let me ask you this. Why do you think that the men enter? Well, there's different reasons. Sometimes the wives enter the men. The, the wives, the mothers. I even have phone numbers from Michigan uh, a few weeks ago from a grandmother who wanted to enter her grandsons in Colorado. I have one gentleman who had to go through the elimination process of the interview. He called me from Germany because he was afraid to lose his place in the California pageant. It's, it's phenomenal. I think they're looking for exposure. 
there, of course, we're offering fantastic prizes just like the females have had for many, many years. Okay, I should remind these gentlemen as they walk down the aisle that there's someone down here in the front who's going to be looking at your tush. So, <laughs> so just be aware of that. Our first contestant is Sonny Magana. He's from Stratford in South Jersey. Sonny, Sonny is six foot one inches tall. He's 25 years old. His most unusual sport is hang gliding. He had his first date at the age of 15 with a much older girl. The most important lesson he learned while growing up and would like to pass on to our younger generation is to be tolerant and understanding of others. The most heroic deed Sonny has ever performed was to save a girl from drowning after her brother had pushed her into the swimming pool. This event took place while he was a lifeguard. Please, a round of applause for Sonny Magana from Stratford in South Jersey. <laughs> Our second contestant is from Reading, Pennsylvania. He's Mark Flannery. He's a school teacher. He's six feet tall. He's 25 years of age. He looks a little bit like Mark Spitz, doesn't he? Yes, huh? a lot. He weighs 160 pounds. His most unusual hobby is to collect stuffed bears. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? He enjoys running and aerobics. His most heroic deed was to save a young girl from drowning. Oh, come on, you copied this from the other guy. <laughs> Mark had his first date at the age of 13. He traded places with his twin brother. Ladies, there are two men that look like this. And he dated his brother's original girlfriend. He subsequently dated this girl for a number of years. The most important lesson he learned while growing up and would like to pass on to the younger generation is the importance of having good friends and good family. He feels that material things do not matter. It's people that play an important role in your life. And that's Mark Flannery from Reading, Pennsylvania. Contestant number two. Contestant number three in a gray tuxedo is Jeffrey Price. Jeffrey is six foot three inches tall. He's 23 years old. His favorite sport is frisbee golf. Hmm, I'll have to ask a bit about that. Jeff had his first date at the age of eight. When his, at the age of eight. Yes, eight, I said eight. He's now about 12. <laughs> When his girlfriend and he rode their bikes to the park, unfortunately, it was cut short when he discovered he had a flat tire. He's still using that line now that he has a car. <laughs> the most important lesson he learned while growing up and would like to pass on to the younger generation is to always listen to other people and never be quick to judge someone else without knowing them. He also believes that parents do know what's best for their children and always follow their advice. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Price, from Havertown, PA. <laughs> Contestant number four is from Runnymede in New Jersey. He's five foot 11. He's our youngest contestant today. He's 19 years old. He's the widow baby. He enjoys watching football and he plays sideline football in his spare time. He had his first date at the age of 14. He had a heroic deed when he witnessed a hit and run situation, he held the guy who did it until the police came to the scene. His most important lesson that he'd like to pass on is that you can do anything you want, no matter what it is. You just have to want that certain thing badly enough. <laughs> He's thinking about what he'd want right now. <laughs> this is Anthony Citrito from Runnymede, New Jersey. Our youngest contestant is our oldest contestant this morning. He is 41 years of age. He's Paul Narducci. He weighs 165 pounds. He's 5 foot 11, and he comes from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Doesn't he look great for 41? He looks great at any age. He may be 41, but he's still single. His most unusual hobby is raising Labrador retrievers and pigeons. Mm, I, you gotta keep them apart though, you know? <laughs> Paul is a, spare, uh, is, a, is a school teacher and he enjoys aerobics in his spare time. His first date was at the age of 10, precocious child. In the fifth grade, Paul, uh, that was when his first date was, and Paul's most heroic deed was to go to Vietnam. He was a Vietnam vet. Also, he saved a child in a restaurant while she was choking. The most important lesson he learned while growing up and he'd like to pass this one on, is that everyone should respect each other and be more sensitive to each other's needs. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Narducci from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania.
Contestant number six is from Belmar, New Jersey. He is Bob Shivo. He stands at five foot eight. He weighs 170 pounds. He's 32 years old and he's a bartender and a manager for Lucian's and he owns Chariot Limousine Service. He just returned from Hawaii with his new bride, Chrissy. And that's why he's got that grin on his face. <laughs> just got back from his honeymoon. His most unusual hobby is to fix up old motorcycles. And his favorite sport is boxing. He had his first date at the age of 10. He's got an important lesson that he'd like to pass on, and that is to work hard and stay honest. Bob Shivo. There they are, our six contestants this morning in the male beauty pageant. It's uh, the, the US Man of the Year pageant, but this morning when people are talking, we are going to be running our own pageant, the People Are Talking Man of the Year pageant, and you at home will get to vote for one of these six men as the man that you think best represents United States masculinity. We'll be telling you how you can vote. We'll be giving you a chance to call in and, and ask these young men questions in the next segment of People Are Talking. You'll also get to see them in the swimsuit competition. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to People Are Talking. This morning, we're talking about men who enter beauty pageants and what happens when men do enter beauty pageants. We have six men out here who are contestants in the uh, U.S. Man of the Year pageant. We've just seen them parade in formal wear in a while. We'll see them in this suit competition. Um, let me ask all you guys, why did you do this? <laughs> have a what? good time. To have a good time. Have a good time. Was there anybody out there who was reluctant to do this and was talked into it by somebody? A girlfriend or a wife? You all, guys all wanted it. Uh, a couple yeah? of us have been talked into it by girlfriends. We were mm -hmm. discussing it back there, and they went as far as to send the original entry blank in. Why do you think they wanted other women to ogle you and look at your swimsuits riding up and, 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 <laughs> and sweat and perspire as your bodies walk down the aisle? Why do you think that they would like other women to look at you? I feel proud. They want to show you off. They want to show you off. So I'm going out with him. What? What's so that? I'm going out with him. Do you have a girlfriend? Nah. You don't. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> oh, I think he's a doll. He's, oh, you want me to stand? Yeah. <laughs> he's a little young for you, though, isn't he? He's 19 years old. I have a son that he reminds me of. That's why I like him. Oh, yes. you'd like to go up and give him a nice pinch on his cheek. On his face, right? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. A lot of you guys said you had your first dates when you were like 8 or 10 years old. Do you guys feel like you're different from other men in any way? No, not really. It wasn't real dates. It wasn't, uh, you know. Girls club dance, boys club dance, that yeah. kind of thing. We swapped chewing gum. Yeah. That sort of thing. <laughs> Will something like this help your social life, do you think? Has it helped it already? I'm too early to tell. <laughs> I haven't told anybody. <laughs> I figured after today they'll find out. But you get the, uh, from friends, you get oh, the negative reaction. Why, as you said before, why not? I mean, keep life interesting, do something different, something new comes along, try it. All of you also seem to have performed heroic deeds. Two of you jumped into the same swimming pool. You, it's good thing you didn't bump your hands. <laughs> Save the life of a drowning young girl. I mean, do you, I mean, that, that is something very special. All of you have, have stood on the line there at one point in your life and said, I've got to get involved or not get involved. Uh, you do have that in common, mm -hmm. and I think that's an admirable trait. Do you find that you have anything else in common between all of you? Is, 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 is there competition or is there camaraderie here? Oh, it's camaraderie. It's, yeah, camaraderie. camaraderie. Three of us are from Jersey anyway, three from Pennsylvania, so it won't be all six of us against each other. <laughs> You'll be competing for Mr. New Jersey and Mr. Oh. Pennsylvania. What we saw in the Miss America pageant, as soon as the pageant was over, Miss Ohio said, oh, she should have never won. And then the one, uh, another person said, she was the least liked person in the pageant. You guys, there, there isn't that kind of competition between all of you? No, no, not at all. Yeah. I didn't we feel that. We seem to be so out just, more for the fun yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. You win, you win. If you don't, something new, new experience, friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our, our bun examiner out here, and she's got a <laughs> she's got a question. Yes. I would love to know how do you feel actually being up here where we can watch you instead of you watching us. How do you feel? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait for the bathing suits. What do you think that they might feel like they're exploited? Yeah. Uh, well, didn't we? Well, we have. That's why we've gotten to this point. I think it's great that we can look at them like they look at us. Uh, do you feel exploited at all? Does it, does, does it 
Does no. it bother you at all? Not at all. No, 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 not at all. At one of the Miss America pageants, they burn bras. Maybe there'll be men out there burning their jock straps. <laughs> What do you want to get out of this? What do you think is the ultimate goal? It's a challenge. Yeah. Challenge. Just to win? Gives a regular guy a chance to participate in something, you know, besides professional sports or things like that, you get a lot of attention and exposure. It yeah. gives a regular working class guy a chance to compete in something. Sure. You don't have to be a bodybuilder. No. It doesn't, it's not a physique contest. You guys, I, I, also you see a very wide variety here in terms of, uh, in terms of age range, in terms of background. Yeah, um, you see, I, I think you see a bit more variety here than you do in the, in, in the Miss America pageant. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. They have limits. They have age limits, I think, in there. As do you well have age limits here? Absolutely no. not. If a man goes out and he takes good care of himself and he is well-dressed, well-groomed, why shouldn't he be able to compete against a guy 25 who doesn't take that good care There's of no himself? limitation. I could enter this pageant if I uh, well, I'm hoping you are. We have, we have your application in the back with you. Anybody else out here? We had some questions down here. You had a question, a very intimate question for one of these guys. Yes. Yeah, come on. come on. Now you're embarrassed, huh? You were all brave before. I didn't ask that question. You don't want to ask it? They wanted to know, are, how many of you are available and how many of you are single? I mean, some people out here, not, not this person, of course, because she would never ask a question like this. But during the breaks, they're all saying, which ones are available for dates? Which, which guys are available here? Available? Available. <laughs> I came back from my honeymoon a week ago. Do you think that the, the attitudes of men have changed? I, I don't know if guys would do something like this maybe 10 or 15 years ago, you know? I mean, women are becoming more aggressive today. Yes. You know, it's kind of taking a, taking a turn around. The guys used to be aggressive and forward, take advantage of the girls. Now today the girls are taking advantage of the guys. Do you, hey, yeah, that that do you enjoy that? I can't answer that honestly because I'm married now, but... <laughs> <laughs> and, and you just I used to enjoy it, yeah. You just got back from your honeymoon. I mean, you just, you're just starting off a new marriage. Mm -hmm. Don't you think this might put a little tension on that marriage? Actually, she didn't know about it until we started the show. <laughs> Where are you from? Belmar. 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 Ah, Belmar. That's our viewing area. Uh, what's your wife's name? Chris. Chris. Uh, Chris, if you're at home now, give us a ring here if people are talking. About. <laughs> I'm going to hear the first fight of your marriage here on the air. Anybody else have a question out here for the men who are up there? Yes, would you stand up, please, sir? Go ahead. I'd like to know, where are some of the blacks? Is there anybody to participate in these things? And if so, where could... Uh... You want to enter? Come on up! <laughs> where could... Would you enter something like this? No, not frankly. No, not with my body as it is there. Well, uh, why not? Well, I'm a little heavy. It'll take a little work. Maybe I could work on it. Though. But uh, I'll be willing to. But if I could go out for a workout, get a schedule for a workout and all, but I would never participate. Maybe we'll go together and work out together. That's just the way I feel. I... Where, where could they go? Okay. How would you get in contact with uh, some like this? Black men can enter this pageant, can't they? I would like to say that um, this is a true story, that I have been in many pageants myself in the past, and I have three beautiful little girls that if I don't say that on this show, they're never going to talk to me again. They're eight years, seven years, and five years. I was 200 pounds when I had those children. And I want you all to know, uh, no matter what anyone says about pageants, they really give you a goal in life. And this was the reason when I entered the Mrs. New Jersey America in 85. This was the reason I got my weight down to what it is now. So I do have a very fine black man in my pageant. As a matter of fact, Great. one of them called me about 11 last night and couldn't make it. Oh, he was the guy that dropped yeah. out today. He was supposed to come today, yes. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm, but you can go to the pageant and see him there. Ma'am, would you stand up, please? Go ahead. Um, was this the guy on the um, screen there oh, I don't with know the that muscles? Was, you like that guy with the muscles? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll try to find out who that is for you later on in the show. We have a telephone call right now from Tracy from Philadelphia. Good morning, Aaron. People are talking. Good morning, Richard. Hi. Hi, my name is Tracy. I'm from Roxburgh, Philadelphia. Okay. And my question's for number two. Now, I'm sorry if this might be a hard question, but I doubt it. I wanted to know how he would, what kind of advice he'd give a young child about the use of drugs in high school. I know that towards this time, a lot of kids are being forced with drugs and stuff like that. What kind of advice would you give a kid, say, in high school? 
what I usually tell them, um, I'm what's called a SAP representative, which is student assistant program, and I, I am counsel many people with drug problems in the junior high level. My obvious thing to tell them is to avoid it at all measures. There's too many highs in life to be doing drugs. I tell them running, racquetball, whatever, friends. I think it's so much more important than uh, anything you can do, any high you can get, and it lasts much longer. I'm glad we had that question, because in the Miss America pageant, they always ask some of these really stupid questions. You know, they sit there, if you could meet anybody in history, who would you like to meet and why? If you could go and end uh, the war in Lebanon, what would you do? You know, I mean, they have, they ask them ridiculous questions. Do you ask these guys ridiculous questions too? Well, they're not all ridiculous. All right, let's true. see what some of those questions are. Why don't you ask some of these uh, men some of those questions and we'll see how they respond. Okay, number one. Your blind date weighs in excess of 400 pounds. How do you tactfully get her into your small two-seat sports car? Well, I try to make it as comfortable as possible, uh, perhaps even by pushing the seat back a bit, or just by making it uh, as positive as possible to get her in the car and out on the date. Okay. Number two, you're out on that date and you realize the dinner check is $10 more than you have. I didn't mention the little girl that you were with. You wanted to date for a long time. What do you do? Uh, I, would, I would die right away, but I would go and somehow try to um, uh, make up some excuse. I left my wallet somewhere, I talked to the maitre d', whatever. Somehow I would try to tactfully get out of it and I'm pretty good at that, I think, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Okay. Number three, what do you consider to be the most unusual thing that ever happened to you? Oh, wow. That's pretty tough. Well, uh, uh, about a month ago, I was in a bar and uh, socializing with some friends. And as I was sitting facing towards a bartender, there was a mirror behind me. And I saw these three young ladies walking in. And I looked and I saw the third one. I noticed something unusual flames were coming off her head and I was like this is unbelievable so I turned around I started hitting her in the head and uh, <laughs> her hair seemed to have caught on fire from a candle out front in the lobby no kidding but, uh, see I told you guys are all different everyone has fantastic stories I told you <laughs> trust me okay now ready your girlfriend buys you an ugly shirt number four four okay she buys you this ugly shirt now, how do you tactfully avoid hurting her feelings? I'd wear it. That's very good. That's oh. great. <laughs> very good. Okay, number five. If you had the opportunity to spend one day with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Oh, boy. <laughs> anyone in the world. I think Gaddafi. I'd like to find out <laughs> what some of his philosophies are and things. That's a hard one. I really can't think. What would you do with Gaddafi for a day? <laughs> <laughs> I would just hopefully to be able to discuss things with him, not to do anything. Uh, I just think that would be quite interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. For the last question, what is the one thing in life you wish to accomplish the most? Number six? Yes. Uh, be independently successful, be happy, and live happily ever after. All right, fine. The all-American dream. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I know all of you guys are, are very modest, and you have your, your personalities seem to be very attractive. I'm going to ask you to do something that may be a little out of character for you. As I mentioned your name, would you please stand up and tell me why you think people should vote for you? Okay? Number one, Sonny. Hello. Um, well, I think if they'd like to vote for me, they certainly may. Uh, I'll do my best in the uh, U.S. Man of the Year pageant representing New Jersey. So, two be folks from New Jersey. Mark. Um, I think he'd be a good representative for the state. I, I would like to think I'm friendly and well-rounded, and uh, anybody that would vote, I'll give one of my 50 teddy bears to, excuse me, my 500 <laughs> teddy bears to. Three, Jeffrey. I guess I have to appeal to all the Pennsylvania people, but uh, 
I just, I'd like to think that I would do a good job representing the U.S. Man of the Year. I think I, uh, my personality would appeal to some people, hopefully. Uh, just try to show a lot of integrity. Ah, oh, shucks, you guys are so shy. <laughs> <laughs> For Anthony. Uh, I feel I have, <laughs> I feel I have a nice personality. Anthony, some women down here just fainted. I think we have to wake them up. <laughs> okay. Come up. I feel I have a nice personality. I have a lot of competition but I'm gonna think positive and do my best. Thank you. Five, Paul. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> uh, I hope to get the vote of some of the older women just to uh, <laughs> prove that just because you're over 40, life hasn't ended. There's plenty of things to do. And... Okay. Bob, number six. Being involved in the restaurant business for a number of years and involved with Chariot Limousine Service, come in contact with a lot of people. I enjoy people. I really enjoy talking to them, working with them. And the buns aren't bad either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chrissy, if you're at home there in Belmar and you're watching your husband out here, give us a ring if people are talking. We'll take your phone call at 238-4940. Give us a ring. We'd like to hear what your opinion is after coming home from the honeymoon and seeing your hubby on TV showing off his buns. <laughs> We're going to be seeing a lot more of your husband and the other contestants in just a moment as we go into the swimsuit competition for the People Are Talking Man of the Year. Stay with us. On Tuesday's People Are Talking, Will Schreiner finds out which Philadelphia beer tastes best. And then on Wednesday, his special guest is Dr. Art Uline. We've been talking to the young man that might be Mr. New Jersey or Mr. Pennsylvania, possibly the Mr. U.S. Man of the Year. Mrs. New Jersey for 1985. She's Pat Paris Barnaby. Please welcome her to the show. Barnaby. You were in the Mrs. New Jersey pageant? Yes, Richard, the Mrs. New Jersey pageant. So you pageant. have to be married to get into that pageant? Yes, I'm afraid so. How is it different from Miss America? It's much different. Um, it was wonderful because I had a chance to, comp to compete in the Mrs. America pageant, which was held in Reno, Nevada a year and a half ago. It is not an, based on talent. It is based on interview, 50% interview, 25% swimsuit, 25% evening gown. It was a wonderful experience, and I was, I had never been in a pageant before in my life. And I entered this pageant, and I thought, well, okay, God, if you want me to win, this, this will be great. But if not, I have learned so much about myself that I never knew before. It wasn't competitive? Yes, it was very competitive. All right, behind okay. the scenes. I know we always hear... A lot of people say, oh, this is wonderful. But then after the pageant is over, look what happened at the Miss America pageant. Yes. All of the women that participated, or not all of them, I should say, but quite a few of them turned around and ganged up on the person that won and said she was the least liked and she was egotistical and she gave out pictures of herself to everybody else instead of giving out presents. Mm. Do you find, I mean, I have actually, I've hosted a few beauty pageants. And some, t some of the people go in and, and say, I'm going to have a good time. Some of the people go in and say, I'm going to win this if I have to gnaw her neck off. It's true. It's true. And I, I'm working with Ronnie and the Mr. Pageant. I was involved in a few other pageants. I've judged a lot of pageants from um, four-year-old girls and boys all the way up to men, male models. And I have to tell you that working with men is just an unbelievable Diff different world you to work with men. think they're less competitive than the women? Well, they're competitive by nature because, I mean, going back to the beginning of time, men have always been competitive, trying to be always the leader of the crowd or whatever, but it's just their nature. And uh, like they talked about today, there's so much more camaraderie between them. They enjoy being with each other, they pat each other on the back, they help each other dress. In a women's pageant, um, you find women off by themselves. Everyone does not want to help each other sometime, and it, or if they do, it's not very, they're not really wanting to What's help each other. What's the most sometime. embarrassing moment you've heard about backstage? Uh, at the pageant before me, one of the girls who they felt was going to win in the Mrs. Pageant, they uh, took their gown and ripped it, cut it. Uh, the, another girl, they had um, lipstick all over it. They, had, they ruined some of the girls' gowns that they felt were going to get into the top ten. So they had to go out and get them new gowns. Um, it's, I'm sorry, top ten. So they had to go out and get them new gowns. Um, it I 
Maybe that's changing. Uh, yes, I don't think it's any different in a uh, in a company. Sonny, of course, again, is from Stratford, New Jersey, in South Jersey. He's competing for the title of Mr. New Jersey. He's a man of a different stripe. Contestant <laughs> number two is Mark Flattery in yellow. He looks more like Mark Spix now than ever. Mark, what do you do to work out? I do aerobics and I run every morning, five miles before school. You don't do any weightlifting or anything like that? Just very little bit. I like aerobics and the running activity is too hyper to do lifting. You, well, you do enough, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Flattery, Reading, oh, Pennsylvania. I know. I just Jeffrey Price, contestant number three from Havertown. I guess boxers are in this year, not, uh, not bikinis. <laughs> Jeffrey, of course, is six foot three and he's 23 years old. What do you do to work out? I just play a lot of basketball, uh, a little weightlifting. Not pretty. much, run a little bit. Hang off. Jeffrey Price, please give him a round of applause. <laughs> and from Runnymede, New Jersey, is the baby of the group, <laughs> Anthony Citrino. Contestant number four, he's five foot eleven and nineteen years old. <laughs> I bet he's a big hit at, at uh, Margate Beach, huh? <laughs> Where do you hang out at the beach, Anthony? Wildwood. Wildwood. Oh, a Wildwood baby. Okay, I'm sure there's a lot of people looking for you down there next summer. <laughs> Anthony Citrino. Contestant number five, Paul Narducci. Forty-one years old. <laughs> he, he just gave that baker in our audience a, a, a good shot of his buns there. Anthony, I mean, uh, Paul, I'm sorry. You, uh, you still do the workout that you did when you were in, the, what were you, you were in NAM, right? Right, I'm an, I'm an aerobics instructor now at the Lehigh Valley Fitness Centers in Bethlehem and Allentown, three of the best in the state. Boy, yeah. that's good. 41 years old, you're in great shape. Thank you. Thank you. And our last contestant is Bob Shivo. He is 32 years old. He just got back from his honeymoon. Did you just see him on that uh, on Maui Beach there with uh, <laughs> with his bride and Magnum PI running around on the beach? <laughs> see, your tan has started to fade already, huh? <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Now, what do you have a tattoo on your arm? Can we take a look at that? What was it? In loving memory of our brother Albert. Is that, is that your brother? Uh, uh, our brother died a couple years ago. Okay, and what is this around your neck here? That's a sign board. Mercedes sign. Do you have a Mercedes? No, my wife gave it to me as a sign of perfection and excellence. Perfection and excellence. Okay, thank you. Bob Shivo. <laughs> we're going to take a break right now, but when we do come back for people are talking, we're going to be showing you at home how you can vote for the man that you think best exemplifies American masculinity. The people are talking man of the year as we look at male beauty pageants. Don't go away. Hi, welcome back to People Are Talking. Well, now comes the moment that you've all been waiting for. It's time to vote for the man you think should win the title, People Are Talking Man of the Year. And you can vote at home. We're going to tell you how right now. If you want to vote, go run and grab a pencil and paper because the number is 215-238-4940. 215-238-4940. Select the contestant of your choice by number only. When you call in, just say number four, number two, number five, number six. Let me show them to you one more time so you can get their numbers and their names, but you only need their numbers when you call in. Contestant number one, Sonny Magana. 
Contestant number two, Mark Flannery. Contestant number three, Jeffrey Price. Contestant number four, Anthony Centrito. <laughs> Everybody out here is going, mm, mm. <laughs> Contestant number five, Paul Narducci. Contestant number six, Robert Schivo. Now remember, if you want to vote, just go to the phone and dial 215-238-4940. And please, just mention the number of the contestant that you want to vote for. The number one more time, 215-238-4940. We're going to be back later on in the show with the results of who you think best exemplifies masculinity here in the Delaware Valley. But right now, we're going to check in with a winner in the Eyewitness Newsroom, Pat Chiraki. We'll be right back. Good morning, Richard, and thank you. Here are some of the stories we're working on today for Eyewitness News at noon. The William Bryant Elementary School is the scene of a protest this morning by parents worried about dangerous levels of asbestos in the school. The Senate is to take up the tax reform legislation that passed the House yesterday. We'll have a reaction for you on that passage at noon. Jim McGowan is set to make a swim in the English Channel. Mike Strug will be reporting live from London. And Trudy Haynes will be along to talk to fitness expert Denise Austin. Join us for these stories and all the news coming up on Eyewitness News at Noon. Richard, back to you. Thanks. We're going to be back with some questions about the Man of the Year contest to the Men of the Year. We're also going to come back with the results uh, later on in the show of who you think best exemplifies masculinity here in the Delaware Valley. The number one more time, 215-238-4940. Remember, vote by, by number only. And we'll be right back. So don't go away. Welcome back to People Are Talking. This morning we're looking at male beauty pageants. We have six contestants here from Mr. New Jersey and Mr. Pennsylvania. But this morning, you at home can be voting for the man that you think should be the talking man of the year. The number for the vote is 215-238-4940. We have lots of questions for these men out here in the audience. Would you stand up, please? Go ahead. Yes, I want to know why they didn't model in bikinis. Is there a reason why they weren't in bikinis? You would like to see bikinis. Would you like, is, is that an, a skimpy little bikini? Yes, very. Okay. <laughs> if, if I may answer that question, I would like to say that we are not doing a meat contest or a body contest. We are not allowing oil or bikinis. And I would like to also say that I want to keep this a first class show so that we have all good quality people out there. This is not a male stripper show. And we want to keep it that way. In the Miss America pageant, they also don't allow bikinis Absolutely. in that pageant as well. Some more questions out here in the audience. Who had a question? Somebody down here? Yes, could you stand up, please? Go ahead. Hi. What category do you feel should carry the most weight in determining who's the winner? Physical appearance, talent, or your great deeds? <laughs> <laughs> All three. Yes, a combination there. All three. Is there, is there a certain delineation as to which is most important? Absolutely. 50% of the whole voting uh, process is interview. The interview and the real talk with the fellow to find out what he's all about is basically going to be the crux of the voting. 25% will go to tuxedo and 25% in bathing suit. Okay. Would you stand up, please? Go ahead. Hi. How do you get entered into the pageant? How do you get entered you, in? Yeah. Into it. Very easily. Very easily. All you have to do is send a recent picture of your husband or your boyfriend, or he could do it for himself, to post office box 104, Glendora, New Jersey, 08029. If you're in New Jersey, you can call 609-939-6286, out of state, anywhere, 1-800-USA's-MEN, M-E-N. Okay, we're going to be showing those numbers again in the next segment of the show. So if you have a brother, a husband, a father, anybody that you think exemplifies masculinity in our area, we'll be giving out that number and you can run and get a pencil and paper again. Yes, would you stand up, please? Go ahead. Number six. Why would, why, how could he leave an um, honest life with his wife if he just told her about the pageant today? Oh, you want to know that too, right? Yeah. Why didn't he tell his wife? Well, it was a surprise. I told her, I'm sorry. Cool. I told her I had something to do with it. I'm involved in sponsoring it through the limousine service. And then, then I decided to enter it too. So she just knows the first segment of it, and the rest of it was a surprise. Did no? you tell her to watch People Are Talking today? Yeah, I told her to watch, but I didn't tell her why, why it was on it. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, she's at home. She hasn't given us a ring yet. I hope she doesn't ring you when you get home today. Would you stand up, please? Go ahead. Hi. Um, I'd like to know what prizes you win when you, when you win the contest. What, what do you get out of this? In New Jersey alone, just for the state of New Jersey, we have a full-end $6,500 
Coyote Fur Co. from New York First Salon in Cherry Hill. Limousine Service from Chariot Limousine. We also have a car telephone from Excel. Smalls is giving us a brand new tuxedo for the winners. In a number of different states, we're having tuxedos. There'll be wardrobes. We have Creations, and Epsican is giving, if you can see this, a solid gold logo that will be a tie pin for the winner. And of course, the national will get one with all diamonds in it. Uh, those are just the the, uh, the local winners. The state the women prize. That's state. just the local. Okay, sounds pretty good, huh? Question over here. Would you stand up, please? Go ahead. Hi. My question's for number four. What does what do your friends think of you? Like, do they tease you and stuff because you're so young? I didn't tell them. <laughs> you didn't tell them. How old are you? I'll show them the I'm video. I'm 22. Oh, he's a little young for you too. Huh? I'm married too. Oh, I'm married too. Okay. Don't, baby. don't say. Look at look at how she says it. I'm married too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just eyes. So Aren't you worried you're going to give this guy a swelled head and he's going to be ruined forever? So what? So what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite up there? I like uh, number four. Number four. You like number four. Number who's your favorite? Number five. Number five. Like you, what? Like he looks pretty good. 41 years old. Great. Shape. <laughs> Reminds me a little of uh, James Wood, Roy Scheider kind of character. Who do you like? Number one. <laughs> Number one. I like four, too. I like four, too, but number one, that's the look I like. I like that. Okay. Who do you like? Oh, no, I'm, oh, I'm number two, but I'm biased, you know, but I'm... Why are you biased? To, why? Because, well, I'm wondering how number two is going to get home if he thinks he's still available. <laughs> I'm waiting to see this. Were you a Mark Spitz groupie? Oh, no, just Mark Flannery groupie. Mark Flannery. <laughs> Okay, over here, and who's your favorite? I think number three seems very nice. He seems humble and just like really sweet, nice oh. guy. Yeah. Look at him. Oh. He's turning red up there. <laughs> and number six, you have Chrissy when you go home. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> you might be available after today as well. <laughs> Do we have any questions out here in the audience? Let me get the question back here. Would you stand up, please, ma'am? Go ahead. I like number one. I'd like to just know, does he dance? I'm oh, sorry. I didn't Do you dance, number one? Do I dance? Uh, only when I'm drunk. <laughs> we'll have to have a drink, that means. <laughs> Question back here? Yes, I would like to know, how did you feel walking down the aisle in, you know, your swim shorts? Uh, you know, like a nervous feeling or... How does it make you feel to walk out here in your swimsuit? Yeah. Not nervous. Great. I'm nervous. Do you have to suck yeah, in your nervous. stomach? I know That's if I did it, I'd be out here going... <laughs> <laughs> I would suck my stomach in so far it would come out the other side. <laughs> I, mean, I was you, a lifeguard for 10 years. I'm used to walking around in front of people with a bathing suit. And when you're on usually, television. They have bathing suits on, too. Television that makes you look little, yeah. 10 or 15 pounds heavier, too. Yeah. You really have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the difference, is all of you are dressed, and that's um, something that I guess we're used to, because I walking around in bathing suits when everyone else is in a bathing suit is fine, but when half the audience you're looking at is all dressed, it makes you feel weird. Okay, would you stand up, please? Go ahead. Hi, I like number five sweatshirt. You like his sweatshirt. <laughs> okay, that is. California. <laughs> we're going to take a break right now. I know you at home are calling up here at People Are Talking, and we're tabulating the results upstairs to find out who you selected as the People Are Talking man of the year, the man that best exemplifies masculinity in New Jersey and, uh, and in Pennsylvania. I guess you're going to have a Delaware competition, too, Absolutely. aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. It's a small state. They'll probably have small men there. And that <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We'll be right back with the winner of the People Are Talking man of the year, so don't go away. On Mondays, people are talking. Guest host Will Schreiner takes a look at South Street fashion. <laughs> Welcome back to People Are Talking. Uh, we are tabulating the results to find the winner of the People Are Talking Man of the Year contest. But as we do that, let me just remind you that uh, I'm going to go to Hollywood next week to cover some stories for Evening Magazine and for People Are Talking. And filling in for me here will be Will Schreiner. If you'd like to come down and see comedian Will Schreiner, he's a very funny guy. He's going to be here all next week. You can call us right now, 238-4940 for free tickets. And he will be here, of course, all next week. If you have somebody that you'd like to enter in the contest for U.S. Man of the Year, once again, here is that address. Veronica Brancato, Post Office Box 104, Glendora, New Jersey, 08023.
nine. And should they send a picture, of Veronica? Yes, please, a recent photograph and a short biography, if possible. Okay. And the number there in New Jersey is 609-939-6286. Or there's an 800 number if you live somewhere else other than New Jersey, but who would? Uh, the number is 800 USASMEN. 800 USASMEN. And now we are finally going to announce. Would you hold this for me? Now you have to join the union. I'm <laughs> going to announce the winner for the People Are Talking Man of the Year. Would you stand up, please, and help me with this envelope here? Would you just hand me the envelope? No, hand me the card inside the envelope. There you go. Vanna White, better look out. You're so good. <laughs> The winner, the man of the year, is number two, Mark Lennon. Look at this. There you are, Mark. <laughs> there are your roses. You have been voted. Is there anything that you'd like to say to your subjects out there as, you, as you've won this contest? Uh, this has been one of the nicest experiences. And these ladies in the front row and right through here, thank you so much for getting me through this. Perfect. It was great. Thank you. Would you like to take your stroll down the aisle and greet your subjects? <laughs> Mark Flannery. Oh, I love it. What a great oh, thing. Man of the Year. The people are talking, man of the year. Congratulations. Thank you for joining us today. Thank all of our contestants. We're in a great studio audience. Monday, Will Schreiner will be here all week for people are talking. I'll be out in L.A., but I'll be back.